we, some of the reason that we have you on here is, is because you're two months away from getting your master's. Congratulations. You've been, you've been working wow. in a field that deals with real life, real time trauma mm-hmm. as it occurs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so, I mean, is, is there stages to recognizing and, and understanding trauma? Um, well, sure. Um, I think, I mean, really, to, I mean, defining trauma is, it's a very personal thing, but it's really anything that you're just not mentally able to handle. I mean, it can be very loosely described, like you okay. said. It sounds trivial, trivial, trivial to you, but it might be completely overwhelming to me, Ken. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of that just kind of depends on our baseline of resiliency and how much stability and how much supports we already have baked into our lives prior to that trauma taking place, um, which is really going to dictate how we recover from it or don't. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's like if we have a solid, strong foundation, mm-hmm. we're more apt to deal with that in a healthy, constructive manner. Typically, yeah. I mean, and there's variations from person to person for sure. But um, the more, I mean, and like the one thing, and I mean, one of the other things that we talk, we, that I've talked about a lot is resiliency. Um, right. Which is kind of staying on point. The other issue, mm-hmm. Willie, or Willie brought that up too. Um, staying on point and having resiliency through trauma. I mean, we can all, we've all got garbage, right? We all have crap we've oh, yeah. dealt with. We've all got problems. We've all got issues. But um, the people around us are the ones that can kind of help us get through that, obviously. I and mean, it's not really a big shocker, a big secret. Um, but even as, as little as young, I mean, we, we need people around us to be able to thrive and um, develop and grow. Um, and if we don't have those, um, you know, those key people in our lives, our parents, our friends, our family, our coworkers, our bosses, those people that we have real connections with, and we're really going to have our time growing past the trauma that we experienced that got a lot of us into addiction or maladaptive behaviors to begin with. So yeah. trauma is what got a lot of us here talking about recovery. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, and I, I've spent, you know, um, a long time trying to go back through my story, and I'm still working through pieces of that, and that'll be a, a long, long process, but um, I still have some issues in my trauma, and even though I've got a lot more awareness now that I've got some education and some more experience and some pride, some sobriety behind me, I still have issues. This isn't going to go away. There is no finish line with this, right? right. It's a daily mm-hmm. thing, so. Right. It's almost like the journey never ends. Well, right. It does one day. Kind of, well, yeah. <laughs> There's right. only one finish line in yeah. life, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, Good point. Yeah, so. for sure. Until then, we're just try to have quality of life yeah. through that, regardless of what our past looked like, sure. right? So, Absolutely. so uh, you mentioned something just a second ago about maladapted behaviors. Yeah. Like, what are some? Like, we obviously talk a lot about addiction, and sure. that's one of the behaviors. But what sure. are some of the other behaviors that kind of so, go? So, yeah, addiction's an easy one. It could also be um, we go back to poor, bad relationships when we feel bad about ourselves. Okay. Okay. We rely on other people to make us feel good about ourselves. Codependency? Than, sure. Yeah. Codependency is a good mm-hmm. one. Uh, lying, thief, stealing, okay. yeah. gambling. I mean, it can be anything. It could be drinking too much coffee or eating too much peanut butter. It really doesn't matter. Um, if it's not healthy, it's not sustainable, and it's causing issues in your life long term, mm-hmm. that's an issue. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Does that make sense? Perfect. Cool. Perfect sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like what you said. Like, it, I think... All too often, you know, when we experience things like trauma, we we do sort of expect there to be a moment where it no longer has an impact on mm-hmm. us. Yeah. And, you know, you pointed out that there is no finish line. And it's like, really, I think the goal is, and, you know, maybe I'm just speaking for myself. Like the goal is with, with myself is to allow these things to shape me in a positive way. Sure. And, and not allow them to turn me into a victim, mm-hmm. right? Even though I might be a victim of abuse, like it's preferred in my in my verbiage to, to come out of that as a survivor, sure. not a victim. Right. Um, and so, yeah, like I, I just, I really appreciate that you said, you know, there's no finish line. Like it, it's probably always going to take work right. and that's okay. Yeah, because all of our experiences shape the way we view our lives, right? Mm-hmm. And ourselves. And yeah. ourselves and yeah, everyone yeah. around us. So um, kind of the views that we have on um, women or 
different people, I, I, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. um, it could be gay rights, it could be, I mean, there's a lot of racism stuff going on right now. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah. we're in the middle of an epidemic, we're in, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on, but all the things that I've experienced through my life help me to view it in one way or another, and sometimes it's not always healthy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, right. We, we try to fix ourselves by taking things from out there. Sure. And put them in here. Makes all oh, sense yeah. up here, yeah. but it doesn't really. Uh, uh, it's not real. Yeah, it, right. yeah, ends up causing more pain than what we went into it sure. with. You sure. know, so yeah, I know that I've definitely dealt with some trauma, but like I said at the beginning, like I didn't recognize it as trauma until I tried to get well. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. I didn't recognize that some of the things that I'd been through and some of the things that uh, that that I saw happen and some of the things that I was involved with were creating trauma in my life, you know, because I come from a pretty violent background, um, in comparison, right? Like if I'm not a, I'm not like a, a war veteran or anything like that, but daily, you know, danger, carrying weapons, getting in fights, um, being in, in dangerous situations, uh, put me in a position to where when I finally got sober, I got woke up with a gun in my face, mm -hmm. right? And and I didn't recognize that as a traumatic experience until I was I was fairly sober, you know. But it was it was enough to wake me up to the point where I was like, fucking something's got to change. Right. And even though you still now have awareness into that, you probably don't look cops the same. <sighs> I I don't look at right or and guns or anything. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, and that's part of your. Yeah. lens right that's part of your lens that you're filtering the world through yeah so i don't want to go sense. back no. you know and and, no. and i think i can speak for nate a little bit on his experience in jail you yeah know, seeing seeing the shit that he wasn't used to i was there. not prepared for that right mm, yeah. yeah but you know like everyone on this table at this table has experienced has gone through some trauma like we all have been through our own level of trauma and like with me i internalized it as the I was the bad person. I'm the one that brought it on myself. You know, shame. But shame was oh. like shame is a huge part of my story. Sure. Shame. And oh, but yeah. nobody, I, I, I kind of feel like nobody prepared me for how to deal with those things. No. You know, like like we like we said, like you got to figure it out. We had kind of had to figure it out on our own through recovery mm -hmm. and and you know opening up and talking about it. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't want to open up and talk about it because I made me feel like more yeah. more shameful we're as sick as our secrets right? yeah yeah and, and but i think one of the most important things for me was to fucking get it out mm -hmm. let it out and talk yeah. about it and see hey is this normal is this really you know like really who's at fault here like what you know that for me that's mm -hmm. kind of where it started for me and that's like kind of the beginning of the accountability piece is right. fault, there it? but then what do you do with it yeah where do you go from there